Hello there ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Event Hora Interstellar Pilot 2. Just in case you haven't heard of this game before, Interstellar Pilot 2 is a 3D space sandbox RPG where you play as Facebook in a last ditch attempt to save the entire company from its dying fate. Take to the stars and pollute space by building various factories and making a business. Fill space with garbage and debris and take down your competitors through war crimes. This is what this game is all about. So ladies and gentlemen, today in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you fellow gamers how to make your very own corrupt business mega corporation in space. So let's begin. Of course, we are gonna be creating ourselves a new game. And we are gonna be playing on a custom universe. Not only that custom universe is the main content of the game, but it is also great for beginners to learn the basics as you can customize various settings on how the universe will be generated. So first, let's put everything back to default settings. Now, the most notable settings here is generation options and faction seeding. Here in Generation Options, you can manipulate how your universe will look like, such as the number of sectors and the sector sizes. Additionally, you can preview your universe. This is what our universe currently looks like, and if you don't like the layout of your universe, you can just regenerate it until you are satisfied with how it looks. Now for the faction seeding. Here we can manipulate the settings of other factions in the game. Most notable ones are going to be Faction's power and Bandit's power. These sliders determine how powerful other factions and bandits are when the game starts. It essentially functions as a difficulty setting in the game. If you want more challenge, then crank it all the way up. Or if you want an easier game, crank it down a bit. But for us, we're gonna stick with the default settings for this game. So let's proceed. Now we get to choose how we wanna start the game. Of course, it's only natural that choosing citizen, miner, or merchant would be very advisable. However, they're very boring. They're perfect for getting a new player accustomed to the game, but the gameplay gets boring very quick. You're probably going to spend the first 3 hours of playing the game just staring at your screen waiting to earn up a decent fortune. And of course, that's bad. So if you're looking for the best start in the game, then don't choose any of these. Instead, go down here and choose Refinery Owner. Refinery Owner will let us start the game with a handful of credits, a refinery, and a few ships to play around with. It's the most flexible start out of all of them as it can immediately teach all of the basics of the game to the player. You wanna learn the basics of running a business? You have the refinery for that. You wanna play as a miner? You have the ranger for that. You want to become a merchant? You have the Ares for that. You wanna transport passengers around? You have the shuttle for that. It's absolutely perfect ladies and gentlemen. The refinery owner start doesn't give you less for the game to become boring and at the same time it doesn't give you too much for the game to become boring. It just gives you the right amount of what you need to have fun and enjoy the game. Now that we have chosen our game type apparently, it's time for us to dive into the wonderful universe of Warcraft Interstellar Pilot 2. Alright, we are in ladies and gentlemen and we are currently piloting our Ares. First things first, we need to know where we are and who are the factions around us. Best way to do that is to enter our refinery here and then buy Sector Intel. Buying Sector Intel will immediately tell us who and what are the stations around us in this sector. Okay, this is great. We have two factories in the sector with us. We've got plenty of asteroids and this place is actually quite busy. The traffic in this sector is quite nice. So at the very least, we're safe here and we don't have to worry about bandits for the time being. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Let's go to the log menu up here and then go to faction settings. Here we can change the name of our pilot, that's us, and change the name of our faction. Of course, we're gonna name our pilot first. And he will be 
the magnificent, the magnanimous, Durkin Mac Hawk. Oh yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's the legendary Mr. Mac Hawk. And our faction name will be... We need to make this sound generic as much as possible, so... Biotech Arms Lifelong Service, otherwise known as... Yes, very generic indeed. Hello there, Editor Chicken here. You may have noticed some sudden changes to the game, particularly this part up here. You see, while I was working on this video, the game received an update. An update which I was pretty much forced to install since I want to make this video accurate and relevant as much as possible. However, I was too lazy to start all over again so you get this message as a heads up instead. Anyway, back to the video. Now, there's a lot of ways we can start playing the game here. The most obvious choices here are either a miner or a trader. But for us, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna do both. So what we're gonna do is sell two of our ships, the Ranger and the Shuttle in our refinery. We are also going to sell all of the components of our refinery, sell the weapons and sell the shield. This will allow us to start the game with a lot of money. Using the money, we are going to buy two Holor M variants. These are mining ships that are way better than the Ranger M. Now we are going to upgrade and give each of them an advanced mining laser. This will make it a lot easier and quicker for them to mine asteroids. Alright, now that we have the two haulers ready, we can now start our mining operation. All we have to do left is to order our ships off to mine. And we can do that anywhere by going to the property menu, select our miner over here, open up the ship menu, then select orders. This will bring up the orders menu where we can change the ship's settings. Go to home base, pick a base, and select the refinery as the home base. Then put this slider all the way to zero. Now go back, go to orders, and then finally order the ship to mine asteroids. Now you're probably wondering what on bloody space did we just do? Well ladies and gentlemen, all those twists and turns that we did is just all to order one miner to go to work. Amazing isn't it? 100% totally not complicated at all. The reason we did all that is because miners tend to go out to other sectors to mine asteroids or sell cargo. As much as possible, we would want our miners to stay in our sector. So we have to choose them a home base, then set their maximum jumps to zero. This way, they will stay here and never leave the sector. We only did this to one ship though, we need to do it to the other ship as well. And off they go, going to mine asteroids for the rest of their miserable lives. Never getting a break and never ever leaving this sector. Now for our trading operations. This is where our Ares comes in. The Ares is the best ship to use when trading goods. It has decent weaponry, fast speed, and a large cargo bay for trading lots of goods at once. In addition, it can also be outfitted with a stealth module for safer sector transition. It is the perfect trading ship ladies and gentlemen. Nothing else in the game comes close to it. In order for us to run a successful and efficient trading operation, we need information. Information is vital in this game. If we go and take a look at the universe map here, you'll notice that it's very empty. We know absolutely nothing about the neighboring sectors. And of course, this is bad for business. Now you're probably thinking, why not just explore space? Why not go out into space and discover capitalism? Well, ladies and gentlemen, why do that when you can just buy information? There's a reason why we have spare money, and that is for buying sector intel. We can easily do that by talking to whatever ship that passes us by, and then buying intel. Here we can select and buy information about a sector of our choosing, but this doesn't matter because we're buying them all.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back and we're now dirt poor. I have bought all the intel that I can and if you would look at the universe map, you'll see that it's now a lot more colorful than last time. And I've come to find out that we have enemy bandits down here, which is unfortunate. But look on the bright side, we have Pam Gol over here, literally our neighbor and very secure. Not only that, there are also a number of factories in the sector, which will be very good for trading. However, since we are now poor, we have to wait until our miners have gathered enough ores for our refinery to begin producing high quality materials to trade with. So, we're gonna be stuck here for a while. Or are we? We can still do a lot of things while our miners mine for ores. And one of them is doing missions. Accepting and doing missions for other factions is not really a great way to earn money. The only missions that are worth doing are the ship delivery missions. These missions will profit you a lot of money. Everything else just isn't really worth it. However, since we're really broke, we need to do these missions for money. Alright, it's been a few minutes, we're still poor and in fact, we lost money since the last time. But our refinery has begun manufacturing a lot of nano tips and advanced alloys. And with this, we can now start trading. We can trade manually by piloting the ship ourselves, but who wants to do that? Before we automate trading, we will go to the faction settings once again and exclude sectors from navigation. This setting will prevent our ships from going into sectors we don't want them to. We have bandits in Solesta and Gorkiv, so we're gonna be selecting them to prevent our ships from going into them. Now, to order our ships to trade, we must do the same as we did to our miners. Go to ship settings, select a home base, and then move the slider down to your preferred max jumps to prevent your ships from going too far away. Since Pamgol is literally our neighbor, we are going to be setting this slider to 1. And lastly, order the ship to trade. And there we go ladies and gentlemen, we now have a working economic system consisting of two miners, a refinery, and an Ares for moving things around and trading. From this point on ladies and gentlemen, we can do whatever we want. We can just sit back, relax, and do absolutely nothing and our properties will just keep on earning us money. While our ships are busy making money, I'm gonna talk to you lovely people about various tips and tricks that are generally helpful for your adventures in this space. Organization in this game is garbage. Sure, it may not look like it at the moment, but the longer the game goes on and the more properties you have, it's gonna be an absolute nightmare. Now, in order to keep things neat and tidy, I have a naming system for each of my ships. As you may have noticed, I have already changed the names of my ships into something more corporate. My miners as extractors and my trader as a transporter. And depending on how many there are of the same type and of the same purpose, I give them a number, such as Extractor 1 and Extractor 2. This is actually how I name and identify my ships in all of my games. If you have your own naming system, then use that. Trust me, it will make your property menu look clean. Specializing certain ships for a single purpose is absolutely recommended. Not only for the sake of organization, but also for the sake of efficiency. A great example is using one type of ship for trading. For me, I use RS ships exclusively for moving goods and trading, nothing else. In order to maximize my RS's trading potential, I give them stealth modules and change their guns to energy weapons so that they don't have to carry ammunition, etc, etc. The point is, you should know what ship to use and for what purpose as well as know what ship to keep and what to sell. What I'm trying to say here is be opportunistic. 
Whenever you see a space battle like this, there's a good chance that you can score yourself some loot. And maybe if you're lucky, a whole ship! So keep an eye out for large scale space battles and you could come home with a new ship. Okay ladies and gentlemen, we're back and we've earned quite a lot of money. With this money, we are gonna be upgrading our miners and give each of them another advanced mining laser as well as buy them an upgraded power generator from a nearby equipment shop to compensate for the energy cost of the mining lasers. Important note ladies and gentlemen, two miners with advanced mining lasers are enough to keep one refinery supplied with ores. Okay, now that we have this system, you might ask me, what are we gonna do now? Well, we're gonna earn more money for a new Ares, so that we can trade more goods and earn more money. After that, we're gonna try to earn up enough money to build our first factory. What factory are we gonna build? Well, you'll know soon ladies and gentlemen, but for now, we must grind. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we are back and we're very rich. Now you might be wondering where did I get all this money from? Well... Yes, I have stolen a Magnus, but that's not all. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that happened. What are the chances of us coming across a damaged Magnus of a small and insignificant freelance faction? We have stolen a Magnus! And as a bonus, we have also stolen a brewery. This is exactly what I'm talking about when I said, be opportunistic. Who knew that at the early stages of the game, we would earn over 1 million credits in the bank. And it's only day 4 ladies and gentlemen absolutely amazing and yes i sold the magnus reason why we now have a lot of money so we have a brewery now that's really good with this much money we can buy ourselves a new rs for trading but why buy a new ship when we can straight up build ourselves our first i mean second factory now when building your factories you should know what factory to build since that we have a refinery that mainly produces nano chips and advanced alloys, it's only logical that we also build a factory that uses those same materials to manufacture goods. So the best factories for us to build at the moment are a vehicle factory, arms factory, or a pods factory. So which one do we build? Well, it depends. You also need to make sure that you can sell the goods your factories produce. Because each building only accepts certain goods. For example, a bar. Bars only trade and accept pindolan ale, purified water, and happy pills. Outposts can accept and trade a variety of goods. And trade stations accepts all goods for trade. Since there is an outpost here in Pamgol, it only makes sense that we should build an arms factory because this factory produces plasma rifles and plasma rifles are accepted in outposts for trade. A little side note, when building any kind of a structure, do not use these buttons. Do not ever rotate the building. Why? Because it looks terrible and out of place on the sector map. So don't rotate your buildings. And there we go ladies and gentlemen. Our arms factory has been built and this will net us even more money than before. We have further improved our economic system. 
From this point on, we can start earning for ship upgrades or buying more ships. We can start slowly building up our military as well as improving trade. But that is a video for another time. So that's it ladies and gentlemen. We started out as a lowly refinery owner, cheekily stole a capital ship and a brewery, and ended up as a very successful probably legal arms dealer in space. And trust me, the fun is just beginning. But for now, I'm gonna end it here. So I hope that this video helped in your space adventures. I thank you all for watching and see you guys in the next one.